Let's talk lists in Desmos. It's a powerful visual tool that's often underutilized. I can define a list here by typing a letter. I can have a subscript or just a letter by itself. And then inside square brackets, all I need to do is add some numbers separated by commas. For example, I have one, two, three. Down here I have a function, f of x equals four minus x. Instead of having to do multiple separate values to plot multiple points, I can use the list and it will do all of the elements in the list. So if I were to plot L2 here, instead of having three different points with an x value of one, an x value of two, and an x value of three, it's going to do all three of them. And because I've defined a function here, I can do f of L2. Now that I have these three points, any changes that I make elsewhere in the list will also reflect in the outputs on the screen. Now I don't have to go in order. In fact, this next one can be five. These elements can be one, two, and five, one, three, and five, and it will be reflected over here. Another neat piece of lists is that I don't have to list every single number. Now if I put one, a set of ellipses, dot, 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 and then five, it will fill in the middle with a simple linear sequence. I can also define that sequence. Let's say I wanted to go up to seven, but I didn't want every single uh, integer. Instead, I only wanted the odd integers. I can define that step by giving just a second term. And when I put one, three, and then seven, now it's assuming that I want to count by twos starting at one. So over here, it goes from one to three to five to seven. Let's look at another example with some different pieces. Notice that I have a trig piece here. Now we said that we can define that step value. So if I wanted to go from 0 to 2 pi, that would be really helpful considering that I'm working with trig values. But let's say I wanted to count in increments of pi over 4. gives me nine different pieces. Let's go ahead and plot those pieces on this sine curve. I'll just simply type L3. And now it has these elements here. If I wanted to be sure that I was hitting right on those values, I could change my grid settings. And instead of counting by ones, I'll count by pi divided by 4. And now we can see that it is hitting at those increments of pi over 4 and our axes are actually changed in terms of pi as well. Now one really neat piece here is that if I wanted to maybe go even further than 2 pi, I can actually change this end piece to a variable. Now I changed it to n, and down here I have a variable defined as n. And you can see that the dots are growing as I increase the value of n. Let's try a couple of more things with lists and showing visualizations. Tables act the same way that lists do. So over here where it says x1, that's actually a list, negative 3 to 3. And for y1, if I were to type in values, it would also be a list. But just like we referred to lists before, we can use that to do a lot of calculations at once. So I can say 2 times x1. And then it would give me all the values that were 2 times x1 in the second column. If I wanted to instead use a function, if I say f of x equals x cubed minus x. Up here I can say f of x1. And it will plot those points for me and give me the values. 
which is pretty neat because I can calculate a lot of discrete values without having to type them in individually. For this last set, let's look at something where we can use lists to not just plot points, but actually plot a lot of different functions. So here I have L1 is equal to just 0, 1, 2, 3. If I have the original function x squared, I can also plot a family of functions using the function f and the list L1. I can also highlight key points on them, such as the vertex for each one. And just like before, I can make this family grow by going from 0 to n. So again, lists let you do lots of calculations and lots of visualizations without having to do them individually, but in sets or groups. And a lot of times we can see patterns even more so when we see them in a set.